here in Peru, potatoes have a huge cultural meaning. Potatoes are part of the key diet. Potatoes are eaten at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We went to ask a farmer here, and he said, without potatoes, there is no life. That's what he kind of summed it up. Potato has been part of Andean culture for about 10,000 years. They first cultivated the potato around Lago Titicaca, which is in the border between the southern part of Peru and the northern part of Bolivia. So that is effectively where people started thinking about changing the evolutionary path of potatoes into becoming something that's edible and that's rich in nutrients. The potato is one of the top crops for food around the world. And it encompasses a lot of good things nutritionally. It has good protein, it has good starches, it also has iron and calcium and many other things that people need for their nutrition. And a lot of people's livelihoods depend on it as well. but potato biodiversity is under threat from climate change, from political instability, from urbanization. There are lots of challenges. So here at the International Potato Center, in order to address some of these challenges, we conserve the biodiversity of the potato and we preserve the genetic resources and test tubes of a lot of the different types of potatoes that are no longer in existence anywhere else. We conserve three different kinds of potatoes. Wild potatoes are what you found before people cultivated potatoes. So they're very small, they're very bitter, but they have a very important combination of genes that we want to be able to conserve. When people started cultivating wild potatoes and picking the best of the best, we arrived at what we define as a native potato, which is a potato that people have used through the years, maybe hundreds of years. Now, with the effect of human activity in the world, there's more rain in some places, there's more heat than was expected, and so we bred these native varieties with wild potatoes that contained maybe disease resistance or heat tolerance. Those are then called improved potatoes. The Andes has always been a very risk-prone environment. And that's why we see so much diversity here, because the diversity is kind of a response to risk. It's a risk avoidance strategy itself. Añancho, Don Juan. Añancho, buenos días. ¿Cómo está? Doña Sofía. So the purpose of today's visit is to monitor the diversity of potato that is maintained by the farmers, not in the gene bank, but in its natural environment. What we're doing now with Juan, we're going through each of his rows and each of the plants to see which varieties we encounter. We basically register the varieties according to the naming that Juan gives us. We already have a baseline from 2006, 2007, and we aim to compare it. So it's incredible. I've never seen this one before. I've been visiting Don Juan's farm for, for at least a few years. 
this one certainly appeared. Sometimes new things appear. And we don't really know how to explain how they appear or why they appear. Whether it's mutation or whether it's because of uh, sexual crosses or it's just a very scarce variety, we've never seen it before. But that's why it's so important to come back to these farms because the evolving part and the dynamic part takes place in the fields. The number one problem now for farmers is climate change. We used to be able to plant potatoes at 4,000 meters above sea level. Now, because it's hotter, the local farmers have had to move up the mountain a little bit more than, say, 20 or 30 or 40 years ago to get that cool temperature, which is the appropriate temperature for growing potatoes. but there's just so much that you can climb up the hill to be able to plant potatoes. That's why it's very good if you use the improved potatoes that are coming out of the breeding program here at the International Potato Center. A lot of the varieties that we have collected here in the gene bank are very heat tolerant because they were collected in an area that naturally is an environment for that plant to evolve. Okay. Yes, okay, I yeah. And so when breeders want to cross varieties to try to cultivate for heat tolerance, they look for a plant that has been collected in that type of hot environment, and so you're introducing genes for heat. El pistilo. Para cruzar. Nowadays in Peru, the estimate is that about one third of the total potato area is dedicated to native potatoes and two-thirds is dedicated to improved varieties. <laughs> Compared to native potatoes, improved potatoes have higher yields, they have a cheaper price, they're more accessible to urban consumers and they can adapt to changing climates. So improved potatoes can feed more people. I think that the secret to climate adaptation is partly inside of the biodiversity. Conservation is dynamic, farmers adapt, they adopt new varieties. Some may get lost and other varieties that are stronger and better adapted to the new conditions will become more abundant. What's important? is that we continue to support farmers in their efforts to maintain potato diversity under changing conditions. <laughs>